Hey guys, today we'll be creating a simple chat text mod for the game Rust. In order to do so, we'll be using Oxide and UMod, as well as UMod's covalence plugins. Simply put, Oxide, which is now UMod, is a Rust server modification library. It basically just allows the server's owners to install plugins written in the Oxide libraries. This will all make sense later when we go through it. First off, let me show you a little bit of what you'll be making. A full preview will be shown at the end. Now let's get started on the nitty gritty installation of the Oxide files. Before we begin, I recommend that you have Visual Studio installed or Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio is what I recommend, however, because it'll make your life 300 times easier in the end, and you'll see why soon. Before we can start programming, we need to get the required Oxide library files. Just a reminder, this is a beginner's level video. This is nothing extreme. I'm going to be teaching a little bit of CS. I'm going to be teaching you very slowly and how to do it correctly. So, now that we're ready, we need to get the required Oxide library files. To do so, just go to umod.org or click the first link in the description. It'll bring you to a website like this, where you'll then go to the top, click Games, Rust of course, and then just click Download. It'll download the most recent and stable version. Now, I already have two of these already, so I'm going to cancel this, and I'll show you what to do with the other ones. Now that we're here, we can go ahead and extract this file to something else. So go ahead and right click it, go to extract all. Now you can name this file whatever you want, just make sure you put it in a good directory. Now I already have mine in the documents directory, so I'm not going to extract this one there. So I'm just going to extract mine to the downloads, but it doesn't matter in the end. Just make sure you don't delete it in the long run. Inside will be rust dedicated underscore data and managed and then all the files you'll need but we'll get to this soon but now that those are installed we can go ahead and move over to visual studio code my apologies i said visual studio code i actually meant visual studio but once we have visual studio open we'll see something like this make sure you have c sharp installed you will need c sharp .net framework go ahead file in the top left new and then open project you can also do Control shift n to open it. It should be open to the default screen, which should look like this. You may have this one selected. You'll want to select the one that says Class Library .NET Framework. Not the .NET Standard, but the .NET Framework. Go down here, change the name. Now this does matter. This will be important later on in the video, and I'll tell you why. But definitely name it what you want your mod to be. So in my case, I'm just going to be doing Example for YouTube 1. I recommend copying that and then clicking OK. Now what this will do is create a sample file for you and sample references. Once this opens you can go ahead to the top, get rid of all the usings and you can go ahead and change the public class name. Now this is very very important that you set it to the same name that you just decided to name your file. So in my case I have example for YouTube 1 which I copied earlier. Now you may have whatever up there. If you left it class it'll be class but it has to be the name of the file. Once it's up there we can go ahead and tell it that it'll be using the covalence plugin in the Oxide libraries. Now, you're going to be throwing an error. Let's go ahead and fix that really quick. Go over to your references. In here, go ahead and delete all of these except analyzers. Do not delete analyzers. You will need those. Go up to references, right click references, click add reference, and then go down to browse. It'll go ahead and open a window, and now you want to go ahead and find the extracted files that you had extracted earlier. So the Rust dedicated underscore data, and then managed, and then you want to select all the DLLs. That's just a click and then shift click on the end, and then just click add. It'll go ahead and select every one you need, and then just click OK. It will go ahead and import them into your project, and you'll be able to use them to make sure you don't throw any errors and test your file in the long run. Now this may take a little bit, so as it's loading, I'm going to explain how you can use files like these. So Oxide is built so you can just drag and drop it into any Rust dedicated server, and you'll be accepting plugins. Now the way this works is you write your plugin in Oxide's library, and then all that the developer of the server has to do is drag your CS file or whatever files you have with it JSON images whatever you have into their plugins folder and it'll automatically work now that it's imported as you can see we can go back here save it and up here we're gonna want to change the namespace to oxide dot plugins go ahead and save that you'll now see that this is changed green that means you're on the right track now above namespace you're going to want to type using and then a space oxide 
dot core dot libraries dot covalence and then make sure you finish it in a semicolon in C sharp you need to finish statements like those in semicolons you'll see as we go on a little bit later now we're ready to begin well, oxide requires that you provide an info tag for your plugin this just means that the developer will get a little notification and other developers will see that hey we have this plugin installed to make this info tag you have to go above the public class that contains the name and the covalence plugin directly above it but still inside the namespace brackets go ahead and put a bracket type info capital i parentheses and quotations in these quotations you'll be writing the name of whatever your mod wants to be this doesn't matter you could write anything in this line but i recommend you just name it the name of your file so in my case i can do youtube example file i can even make it special with an exclamation point but i don't care now you're going to want to get out of those quotations but still inside the parentheses add a comma space to make it look pretty of course more quotations and this is where you put the author information so your information so you can put your youtube channel your discord your actual name whatever you wanted in my case i'm going to be doing my youtube i'll be doing youtube rotating fan and you know what to add a little bit of flair i'm going to add my two since we're on a new channel get out of the quotations still inside the parentheses one more comma and one more set of quotations now here you have to put your version which is an integer so it has to be a number so in my case i'm going to be 0 0.01 because it's nothing final this is just the beginning of our program go ahead and save that and if everything's working right you should have no errors now we can go ahead and start in the actual program itself so we'll go into our public class if you see i'm on my first curly bracket i'm just going to press enter puts me on a new line and I'm indented. This command is just going to be a simple help command. So in order to do that, in covalence, you write command. In regular oxide, you would write chat command. But since we're in covalence, I'll just write command. And then I'll put parentheses and quotations. Now, whatever's in the quotations will be what is called in game. So in my case, I want slash help to pull up whatever I have it doing. So in my case, I'll just write help. So the player will write slash help and it'll come up with commands. But you can put whatever you want in there as long as it makes sense and it fits the formatting. Now, new line. We can go ahead and write a private void. And now this is the name of your, your command, the name of your function. So in my case, I'm just going to do help command. But as long as it's not breaking the syntaxing, you can go ahead and put whatever, whatever you want there. Just remember it. Now in covalence, you have to use iPlayer, capital I, capital P, player. Regular Rust Oxide, it would be Bass Player. But since we're using Covalence, we're in iPlayer. So go ahead and write iPlayer, capital I, capital P, space, and just write player. This is declaring player under iPlayer. Now we're going to write a comma, string, space, command. This is basically putting our command, which is help, into string formatting so we can call it later on in the command execution which I will show you guys later now lastly I'm going to write string put an open set of brackets so that's just a left and right bracket with nothing in between and then we'll put a space and args now basically what we're doing is we're taking any arguments after help and putting it into a list format and that list will be a string we can go ahead and call anyone on there and they will be string format now we have to declare what's inside of our void that's done by going on a new line putting curly brackets and then just pressing enter so you have a nice little indented start now for this command i'm going to have multiple arguments which means i can do slash help space admin slash help space food slash help space etc whatever i wanted that's an argument so to do that in the most efficient way you can use their switch functions, which is just done by typing switch, and then we'll be calling our arguments, which we just have declared args. Since it's in a list format, we have to make sure that we're reading the first object in that list, which, simply put, is done by putting parentheses, and in those parentheses, args, brackets, and in those brackets, just type a zero. That'll grab the first argument in that list. Now, go to a new line, put your curly brackets, and press enter. So for switch, instead of if and else, they use case and default. 
so case would be like if the argument equals something right so case and we can say command one so say somebody did slash help space command one it would then print out whatever we want it to do after this we're going to set one up later that says command two and print out whatever we want to do behind that so you go ahead and type case quotations and in the quotations write the command you want then leave the quotations and write a colon enter you're on a new line now the way that you respond to the player in covalence is by typing player dot reply super simple super nice now the player we're using is from the i player that we set up in our private void earlier super duper simple but player dot reply and then in parentheses and quotations you can write whatever you want it to reply with so you could do good job you executed command one all right and then make sure you end your sentence your function your execution with a semicolon now in case it doesn't know when to stop reading so it'll continue to go and go and go until we simply write break and edit in a semicolon. This basically tells the case to stop looking and it will help the compiler as well as you won't throw any syntax issues. Now new line and we do a little bit of a backspace just to match up with the case above it. We can put a new case and a new command. So we're going to do command 2 just to kind of keep it on the same track but you could do help whatever here. Command 2 and then you're going to put a colon, new line, you got this, you're doing this all on your own, I know it. You do player.reply now before you go ahead and write a string, I'm going to show you a little something, something a little, little cool. We can go ahead and make it reactive to the command that we executed. So simply put, we can have it say, uh, respond with help for the command and plus the command. Now basically all that's going to do is reply with respond with help which is where you put the help for the command I just thought it was pretty cool but it would respond with help for the command and then what it would do after the colon is then print the name of the command so it would respond with the help for the command help since the command in this case is help don't forget to end it with a semicolon and a break to make sure we don't throw any errors we're gonna do one more case just to show you and repeat this and nail it in your head that this is as simple as it's gonna get super duper simple I'm not even gonna talk I know you can do this on your own and you did it all on your own no issues whatsoever this is just the if statement if you've ever done any programming in different languages you will find that there have if else statements in this case we have a switch case in default the else in this case is default so if none of these cases are used so if it's help, help space ASD which isn't one of these commands it will respond with whatever is default and you set the default by typing default colon and then go on a new line you do player dot reply and in this case just to teach you guys a little more about C we're gonna write a custom string variable now it sounds difficult but it's not we're gonna go directly into the brackets so the first little space next to the bracket press enter so we're right above switch and here we're going to type string which will declare the next variable name a string we're going to write custom error but you can name this whatever whatever you want your string to be named but in my case i'm going to do custom error just make sure you remember it equals and this is where you can write your custom error so i'm going to write argument not found colon i'm at a plus args zero and I'll go over what all this means in a little bit for a parent command plus command so that may seem a little confusing I'll walk over it right now so all we have right now is a custom error that's our variable which is a string as declared before it and all it says is argument not found whatever the argument is so if I said ASD the argument would be ASD for the parent command which in our case the parent command is help and represented by command which is already a string so we don't have to do anything with it now we're not using it yet we have to go back down to our default player.reply and we have to type custom error 
make sure to end that with a semicolon and a break and there you go you've written your first multiple argument command for the game rust in c sharp now that we're done with that we can go ahead and save it we can go up to file and i'm going to click save as because i'm not saving it from my folder so I'm going to click save as. This will take me here and I'm just going to go straight to my server's files. If you don't have server's files and you plan on just uploading it to the plugins website on Oxide, just go for it. So maybe somebody's going to download it, but I definitely recommend you get a testing server up. Now that you're here, you're going to want to go ahead and name your file what you named your first class, which in my case was example for YouTube one. If you don't do this, you're going to throw errors when it's installing on a server. Go ahead and click save, and there you go. You've just written your first mod. I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like on a Rust server, but before I do, I definitely recommend you look into covalence more than base player, base Rust from Oxide, because covalence will be updated more and more than Oxide will ever be. It's a decaying library. So I definitely recommend you look into covalence more. And every single tutorial I will be writing on this channel will be covalence for Rust, of course. And before we sign off and show you the final product, I want to say I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Different style from my normal gaming videos. If you want to see that, another link will be down in the description. All the links that you need will be in the description. I really hope that this video was helpful and slow enough for you guys to understand. If you guys want me to speed up, let me know. If you guys have any suggestions on how I could improve, let me know. If you have any suggestions of projects you would like me to try, definitely leave them down below because I would love to try them out. And if I can get them successful, I will definitely make a tutorial on it and show you guys how they work. Now, without further ado, your Nurmod showcased.